Hi, this is lecture number 25, how are the European able, countries able to imperialize the lands of the Ottoman Empire? We're going to talk about the weaknesses of the Ottoman Empire, and we're going to talk about Russia, Egypt, and Persia. Um, first thing we need to talk about is the weakness of the Ottoman Empire. Um, this poet right here is a very good example of that. He was a romantic poet from England, and uh, the Europeans considered uh, the Ottoman Empire the sick man of Europe. And uh, he went and he fought for Greek independence from the Ottoman Empire. Tragically, uh, he died from a disease that he caught there. I think he just caught a cold in the rain um, while he was fighting for Greek independence. But it's an example of how Europeans supported the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire. Um, the Europeans had always uh, favored Greek and Roman ideas, and when Greece was finally able to gain their independence, it was considered a big victory. Um, so let's take a closer look at Greece. They gained their independence in 1830. Um, they become the kingdom of Greece in 1832. And they have been supported by the British and the French who admired these Greek ideas like Plato and Socrates and Aristotle. And they were in support of the weakness of the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire had controlled this for hundreds of years and all of a sudden they lost these islands. And you can also see these areas are controlled by the Ottoman Empire and they're also lost uh, at this time. Another example of the lands that the Ottoman Empire lost is Serbia. Serbia is right here. The Ottoman Empire is over here to the southeast. Bulgaria is in between. Here's Greece. And they gained independence in about 1835. And they had lost their independence to the Ottoman Empire in 1389. So for about 500 years, the Serbians were controlled by the Ottoman Empire. And most famously, and this will be very important next month when we study World War I, this Serbian city of Sarajevo right here gets imperialized by the Austro-Hungarian Empire in about 1878. So we'll talk about that a lot next month, but we're introducing it right now. Um, Russia. Now, uh, very famously, uh, this Crimean War is an example of how the British and the French were, and the Russians were fighting over the lands of the Ottoman Empire. The Russians were trying to expand to the south. The Russians had always fought the Ottoman Empire. And as they're expanding, the Ottoman Empire gets really nervous. And the British and the French declare war on Russia and they had fight him here on the Crimean Peninsula. And the, the conflict was over the lands of the Ottoman Empire. Who was going to control them as they kind of dissolved? Uh, this war is famous because this is where you have the first army nurses led by Florence Nightingale. Um, this is also very famous, the Charge of the Light Brigade. And it really shows the weakness of the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire that the British and the French were able to dominate the battlefields over here, even though they had to sail through several seas and yet they're able to mobilize their troops faster than the Russians and the Ottomans. So it's an example of how this war of geopolitics, where you're trying to control strategic land. Right? Now, geopolitically, why is the Ottoman Empire so important? Well, you control the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Sea trade. So if you control the Mediterranean, you control all the trade that happens between Africa, Asia, and Southern Europe. And it became even more important when you discover oil in Persia, which we call Iran today, and Saudi Arabia in about 1900. And you can see how the Ottoman Empire is dissolving over time. All these colored regions were part of the Ottoman Empire. And by about 1924, they become the country of Turkey, this little small country. So you can see they lost a lot, a lot of land, and then there's fights over it. Now the first example of them losing land was here in Egypt. Um, Napoleon had tried to conquer Egypt in about 1791, where he was defeated by Horatio Nelson at the Battle of Cairo. And then a new leader was sent by the Ottoman Empire. His name was Muhammad Ali, and he was supposed to reorganize it. But he actually declares independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1840, and he has the support of the British and the French. He gets independence. He actually controls Egypt, part of Sudan, part of Arabia, all the way up here into Turkey. And he's an example of how uh, the Ottoman Empire is losing lands from the Europeans. The Europeans want to control this area because they want to build this very famous canal, the Suez Canal. Now the Suez Canal is really important because you used to have to sail all the way around Africa to get to India. But now you can cut off a lot of mileage if you can sail through the Suez Canal, which is right here, but connecting the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. Muhammad Ali, he promoted uh, cotton production, which gives us the very famous Egyptian cotton. My wife loves her Egyptian cotton sheets. Uh, very comfortable, very, very um, high quality cotton. And Muhammad Ali promoted that. And to promote trade even more, his grandson, Ismail, 
approved the construction of Suez Canal, and he used massive loans from the French and the British. And ultimately, what happens, the French build it, and the British are able to control it because they are in debt. The Egyptians are in debt to uh, the French and the British. Okay. The next country I want to talk about that's important is Persia. Uh, Persia is right here. We call it Iran today. And Britain, who is controlling India, they imperialize India, wanted to use Afghanistan, which is right here and very famous today, as a buffer between Russia and India. They were always competing with the Russians. So they said, listen, you guys stay out of Afghanistan. Persia, you stay out of Afghanistan and we'll give you some autonomy. And just make sure that these Russians don't come south into our territory of India. And India is completely imperialized by Britain in 1900. Britain is uh, pressuring Persia to stay out of Afghanistan. And they actually um, pay them money to stay out of Afghanistan. And then all of a sudden in 1900, a couple of very important, uh, or a couple of venture capitalists discovered oil in Persia in 1908. And here's a, a picture of their uh, oil find. And this company becomes very famous today. It's called British Petroleum, and it brings incredible wealth because we're going to start to stop using coal to power our engines, and we're going to be using a refined type of oil called gasoline. And these lands become very important. And all these former lands of the Ottoman Empire, Saudi Arabia, Persia, Egypt, they all have massive amounts, Iraq over here, massive amounts of oil. And the more oil you have, the more powerful your army. And we'll get talking about more of that when we talk about World War II. All right, thank you. Bye.